Let's learn how to use the extrude feature in Fusion 360. My name's Adam James and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for jumping right on in. So if you've stayed up to date with my channel recently, you've probably noticed that I've been making some how-to videos on how to use the features within Fusion 360. And I probably should have started at the simplest feature or command, which is the extrude feature, because it's so common across all different CAD platforms, such as SolidWorks, Katia, Fusion 360, NX, and so on. So we'll start in this tutorial with understanding how to create this simple box, uh, and then we'll go over into a little more complex extrusion commands because Fusion 360 allows you to take advantage of using a single sketch for multiple different extrusions due to the fact that other features can take advantage of the same sketch. Uh, and then I also, similar to my last video on shelling, I went ahead and mocked up uh, this Xbox Series X uh, shell. And then on the back, what we'll do is we'll focus on how I used one simple extrusion command for all of these different features on the back housings. Now, as always, what we'll do is we'll go in and create new design at the top here. So we'll just add a new design. We'll save this as extrude box maybe and hit enter. And we'll go to the top left and create a sketch on the top plane, left clicking on that top plane there. Uh, I'll go up here to create in rectangle and we'll select center rectangle. I'll select the origin, left click, and I will left click again and hit escape. We'll do D for dimension. I'll just give this a dimension of maybe 40 and then we'll make it a square. So I'll make this 40 as well, hitting enter and hitting escape. Let's finish the sketch. And this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go to extrude, left click on extrude. Uh, and left click on the sketch profile that we just created. Uh, you can drag in Fusion uh, if you want to, or you can specify a distance so we can give it 40. Uh, and we will select OK. That is the high level basis of how to do an extrude command in Fusion 360. Very easy. Uh, depending on what shape you want to extrude, you can change that um, to say a circle. If you go into the history timeline here, right click on sketch and do edit sketch. Uh, we can actually delete this whole sketch, just control select and delete. See for circle, origin, left click, left click, hit escape. I'm not gonna give it a dimension, just finish sketch. Oh, and then let's right click edit feature and we'll just, it says missing profile, so we'll actually select the profile and then select OK. And now it is a cylinder. Great, OK, let's get into a little more complex example. Um, this, I think, will take advantage of some of the benefits of utilizing a single sketch profile for multiple different extrusion commands. So what we'll do is we'll create sketch at the top left here, and then we'll sketch on the top plane. Again, I will go up to create rectangle, center rectangle, and we'll select the origin and then left click again and hit escape. D for dimension, left click on this top line here and give it a dimension of 100 and then left click on the side and also give that a dimension of 100 millimeters, hitting escape. Great, now we're gonna stay in this sketch here and continue creating uh, some of our sketch profiles that we want to use as reference later. So again, we're going to do a uh, rectangle, center rectangle, and I'm just going to uh, make sure you left click on this dotted line so all the sides are symmetric. Hit escape and then D for dimension, left click, left click, and this is going to be our wall thickness. Uh, actually, this is going to be a feature ledge within an enclosure. So I'm going to give this a little larger than the wall thickness. Maybe we'll do like six millimeters um, if we do a two millimeter wall thickness for this enclosure. And then we'll create four circles. Uh, these will just be like screw bosses for this enclosure. Uh, again, staying on this line, just left click and then left click again and hit escape. D for dimension, left click, and we'll give this maybe a diameter of 10 millimeters. Should be fine, hitting escape. And D for dimension, I'm just gonna make this, let's see, 26 millimeters. 
And to speed things up, let's actually go into rectangle here, do center rectangle, select the origin, and then select the center of this circle as well, hitting escape. And then you can control select these lines from the box that we just made and do X for construction. Now let's do C for circle and select the corner and then left click, left click, left click, left click and left click and hitting escape. And then I'm going to go up here to the equal uh, constraint and then select the first circle that we created and then this top right. So now they are 10 millimeters. First circle top left, 10 millimeters. First circle top bottom right and they're all 10 millimeters. Great. And then what I'll also do is we'll do C for circle and select the origin of this previously top left created circle, left click, and we'll just give you the dimension of maybe 3.8 millimeters. Say we're gonna do like a four millimeter self-tapping screw or something in there. And C for circle again, we'll do the same circles along all of these. Great, and then again, back up to our equal command, but now we're gonna do it to the inner circle on all of the inside circles that we just sketched and looking good, and we'll hit escape. Sorry, just to create that, I did R for rectangle and then left click, left click. Uh, we don't necessarily need to specify the dimensions for that one. So let's, let's finish the sketch here. So now we've got kind of this complex uh, sketch profile that we're gonna use to make this box. What we'll do, I'm just going to hold the left mouse button to select all of this and then we'll go up to extrude. Now it's gonna ask us to give a distance. Uh, we'll do maybe 100 and we'll hit okay. And just to show you what we created, go into inspect section analysis and we'll select this front plane. And what we created is as if none of those other sketch profiles were in the way to allow us to create this simple extrusion, which I think is exactly how it should be in CAD softwares. You know, it should be smart enough to understand that the overall dimension, I don't want them conflicting with each other. Let's just extrude a simple block. And that's exactly what this did. Um, so let's turn this section analysis off. And similar to my last video, we're going to shell this body that was just created. So select shell, select body, and we'll just give it a maybe a wall thickness of two millimeters and we'll hit enter. Let's turn our analysis back on. So this is what we are left with. Now what we can do just using this single sketch profile is create more features in our uh, solid body. So if we just select this outer sketch profile without selecting any of the other uh, profiles within the sketch, we can then go back up to extrude. We could drag this up. Uh, let's not do cut. Let's make sure that the operation here is set to join. Uh, and let's give this maybe a dimension of 10. So maybe this is like a mounting surface or something uh, that we're gonna use for assembly. But we've now got two different features in this block represented by a single sketch, which is harder to do in some CAD softwares because they usually conflict with each other. I think that's really neat. Um, so we'll keep going. We'll hide this body actually in the tree. And then what I'll do is I'll left click. I will left click and I will left click and left click on these outer um, circles and then show the body. And we'll extrude these up maybe to 10 millimeters should be fine. We'll select OK. Oh, and you saw that I didn't want to, those to cut, so I'll right click on this in the history timeline. I'll go to edit feature, and then instead of cut, I'll do join and select OK. So boom, now we've got some maybe screw bosses to mount maybe a PCB onto inside of an enclosure. Now let's create an offset plane uh, from the top here. I just clicked on offset plane, clicking on the top surface of our box. And then we'll give it maybe negative 50. So it's in the middle of the two sides of the housing that we just created. What I'll then do is go to modify uh, split body and we will select the body that we're splitting. 
We'll then select the splitting tool, which is the plane we just created, and then select OK. So now I've got two separate bodies. I'm going to left click on construction here and then hide this plane. Great. So the reason I'm doing that is so that I can make features in this top body here without um, modifying this bottom body. So say, for example, let's say I want to cut a feature out of this top body just by using this bottom sketch profile. So I can hide body one. And what I can do is I can select our bottom sketch profile, go to extrude again, right? And then drag this all the way up so that it starts to cut into body two. Now let's show body one. You'll notice that what it's doing is it's actually cutting body one as well. We don't want that, but what Fusion allows you to do is go to objects to cut and deselect body, oh, I guess it's body six. Interesting why it named it that, but, um, oh, actually we want body six selected, body one not selected. And we'll left click on okay. And there we go. Now we've got a feature that's driven by a single sketch on the bottom using an extrude command that didn't modify our bottom enclosure. I think that's pretty neat. I, I, I think that's a super cool benefit and there's a lot of different use cases. I'd be curious to hear your guys' use cases um, and how you use this in your CAD workflow. I'd leave that in the comments below. All right, so let's actually go over to the Xbox example now. I'm not gonna go into a lot of depth on this one, but I did wanna show how convenient it is when you have so many different hole cutouts on a single housing and how you can use the extrusion command to do that in one simple step. We're gonna open up the extrude command, understand how complex the sketch can be. And then if you have a sketch that has so many different profiles, what you can do is go to extrude again and just left click and select and just left click and select these all and it will identify uh, how many different ones, 139 sketch profiles that you can then extrude. And for the purpose of this example, I'll just extrude them up. But I mean, look at how many features are there just with one simple extrude command using a bunch of different sketch profiles. I think that's pretty neat. And I definitely have used this to save myself a bunch of time in Fusion 360. If you guys found any sort of value in this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.